Hello and welcome back to some brand new episodes of Kyle Engineers. Today we're going to be looking at suspension geometry. This is a very requested subject. Now specifically we're going to be looking at caster, camber, kingpin inclination angle and scrub radius. Now these are all different concepts so I'm going to split them up into four different videos. I'd just like to say that the website MotoIQ Com has some really good reads on this handling stuff. You should definitely go and check that out after here. I didn't steal all my material from there, if that's what you're asking. I do actually have a lot of experience in this area, but I really recommend it for a good solid read. So today's lesson is going to be on kingpin inclination angle, or KPI as it's more commonly known. Now this is an interesting one because it's something that a lot of people get very wrong. KPI is quite simply defined as the axis by which the unsprung suspension component, so that's the wheel hub all that, rotates with respect to the vertical. So this angle here, if we're looking at a double A-arm suspension. Now, kingpin inclination is largely a consequence of trying to fit everything together. If you watch my video on scrub radius, you'll see that the kingpin inclination axis intersects with the ground and the distance between that and the center of the tire's contact patch is the scrub radius. Now, we can't have a scrub radius too big or there'll be structural issues. So, we angle our axis so that it intersects closer with that because obviously we can't move all this suspension into the wheel because there's a lot of stuff there like brakes, all that sort of thing. Because ideally, if you think about it, you could just run two pivots in the middle of the wheel like that, run your kingpin inclination at zero degrees and then you could get whatever scrub radius you wanted by just moving those points sideways. But we can't do that. It just won't fit. So what effect does KPI have on your handling? Well, it actually has a negative effect. It does the exact opposite of caster in terms of what camber it's producing. So as you turn your wheel, your wheel will turn into the corner. It will actually wind on camber in the wrong direction if it's in this axis. And this is the way that most KPI goes. And so it's generally not beneficial from a camber point of view. However, you can balance this out using caster. So check out my other video on caster for more of that. As far as what the driver feels, KPI adds a sort of steering weight that isn't hugely affected by how hard you're turning and gives you a degree of straight line stability. Allow me to demonstrate. If we look from the side, we can see the wheel here. We have our inclination axis coming through there. As this turns, think about the axis, the wheel will flop that way and then flop that way. Now this causes something of an arc in the hub's trajectory. It will move, exaggerated obviously, but it will move in that sort of shape. Now you can see that this point is below this point, right? Now that means that in order to turn that steering wheel, the driver is actually having to effectively lift up the car to a degree. Now this means the weight of the car is actually providing a degree of steering weight onto the driver. So that gives you a bit of stability there. It's kind of a constant weight like that. So that is what the driver's feeling in terms of KPI. You may also notice that I haven't put any caster on this. That's just to simplify things. But in a real car, we would have caster on there. Well, that's KPI explained. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the other videos in the mini series. And hopefully, see you next time.